To discuss that a bit further, we're joined by Mr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, author and historian and investigative journalist. We're joined, he was joining us now by satellite from Washington. Mr. Tarpley, thank you very much for joining us here on Press TV. Now, mm-hmm. looking at the history of U.S.-Syria relations uh, beset with attempted coups, etc., how should we look at the current crisis within Syria and the United States' role in pursuing regime change there? I think it's important that this uh, representative that you've mentioned has made this point in front of this uh, conference, the so-called Friends of Syria. Uh, But we should remember that the entire destabilization of Syria is nothing but a foreign interference. That's really 90 percent of all there's ever been. This is not an indigenous rebellion. There is no uprising. There is no widespread political opposition willing to go, go all the way to, to fighting and killing. Uh, rather, these are death squads. They're deployed by NATO. They've been armed by NATO. We have reports of British and French officers uh, commanding units of the uh, rebel uh, Syrian, uh, uh, free Syrian army. We've got reports of uh, foreign fighters like the infamous Bel Hajj from Libya, uh, commanding groups of Libyans that have been deployed in this fight. We've got reports of CIA, Joint Special Operations Command, uh, assets being committed to this. Uh, We've got reports of rebel units, the Syrian, the Free Syrian Army, once again, with Uzi machine guns that they could only have gotten from the Israelis or indeed being armed with Milan anti-tank missiles, which are pretty much NATO state of the art. So it is a it's a foreign intervention. The goal of this uh, conference, this gaggle in uh, in Tunisia, They call it friends of Syria. Again, with friends like that, you don't need enemies. The Russian foreign ministry said it would be better to call this the enemies of Syria, since what they want to bring is bombing, civil war, followed by a failed state. The the point of this conference was not to not to uh, increase the smuggling uh, shipment of weapons, because that's that's been going on pervasively. They wanted to gin up and still want to gin up because there are two more days of the conference hysteria to launch an armed invasion. In other words, they're trying to assemble a coalition of the willing of the type we saw in Iraq and carry out an armed uh, invasion with a bombing campaign and then, uh, and then a ground war, if that proves to be necessary. And it will in this case, or it would. So that's what they aimed for. Now, they, I think their conference has turned out to be a fiasco. Russia didn't come. China didn't come. Lebanon didn't come. Uh, they wanted 70 countries. Uh, As of yesterday, they thought they'd get 70 countries. Then it went down to 67. I think the actual total is about 50. And of those that came, Saudi Arabia then walked out, saying that this conference was not good enough. It was not imperialist enough. It was not aggressive enough. There wasn't enough uh, effort behind the the overthrow of the Assad government, which seems to be the uh, the obsession of the Saudi uh, royals. Uh, And then what actually went on, I think, was also uh, there was no uh, disappointing for the imperialists in the sense that there was no Syrian government representative and they were not able to agree on the Syrian National Council because you've got all of these contending groups. You've got Galyun of the Syrian National Council. You've got Rahman of the Syrian Observatory. You've got Kadam. You've got uh, all these other groups. They can't agree. It's a splintered, fragmented group. And the main force within it would actually seem to be al-Qaeda, as Zawahiri told us last week and as uh, uh, James Clapper, the intelligence czar here in Washington, has confirmed. So I think the first day would have to be scored an absolute fiasco. And we had the Arab street. We had hundreds and hundreds of, of normal Tunisians coming out there against imperialism for Syria and many of them for Assad. So uh, the whole thing took place under uh, conditions of siege. Hillary Clinton was forced to retreat to her hotel and cower in her boudoir. Uh, this is a pretty sad uh, uh, result for the first day. Right now, Mr. Tarpley, let's discuss another key player in the region, that being Israel. In the 90s, there was talk of peace between Syria and Israel, yet now Israel, too, is, of course, promoting Assad's fall. How important is that in this current crisis? Well, it it, it simply shows, in case there was any doubt, that this is an imperialist operation from the word go. And we even have uh, elements of the Syrian opposition, of the the sort of this thin layer of political 
uh, mercenaries that, that act as front men for what is overwhelmingly a, a death squad operation. Some of these political spokespersons have said, if NATO won't help us and if the United Nations won't help us, they're calling on the Israelis to invade the country, overthrow Assad, and then give them, I don't know what, freedom. It shows the absolute degeneracy and depravity of these people calling themselves the Syrian opposition. I mean, once you say that, you want, you want your country bombed, you want your country invaded, and not even invaded by NATO, invaded by the Israelis. This goes beyond all, uh, all, all previous definitions of, of degradation, and, and I, I think you can see that th these are tiny groups that are fomented uh, by th uh, organisms like the National Endowment for Democracy uh, and similar groups here in Washington. Mr. Charpley, for the other Arab regimes in the region, should the way Syria is being treated um, by the West be a forewarning that their day two is coming soon, as loyalty clearly doesn't exist within the chambers of power in the United States? Absolutely. We have a rampage of the State Department and the CIA, which ultimately targets all independent countries. Anybody who has any kind of independence, sovereignty, or the ability to say no either to NATO or to the International Monetary Fund or the World Bank or the World Trade Organization, those countries uh, are targeted. Now, for the moment, the monarchies have been left alone, but I, I, I foresee a time somewhat down the road when that, that might change. And certainly, uh, Russia, China, and many, many others, Iran, Syria, Pakistan, uh, Algeria, and all kinds of other countries, Venezuela, have all seen that what is it, what's being attempted here is to institutionalize uh, a kind of a permanent destabilization of the world, right? Trotsky had the, the permanent revolution. A lot of these neo-Trotskyites who run U.S. foreign policy seem to want to have the, the permanent destabilization of all countries. It's a permanent revolution against the modern state, and th that, will, uh, that will not spare anybody in the long run. All right, we'll have to leave it there for now. Those Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, author, historian, and investigative journalist, joining us from Washington. Dr. Tarpley, thank you very much for your insight.